In this video, I'm going to teach you a skill that every top player uses to simplify 8-ball and 9-ball patterns, but it's a skill that is rarely, if ever, taught. So if you're ready, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to show you how to drive the cue ball to a rail hitting a specific target. If you've ever watched top players play 8-ball or 9-ball, you'll begin to notice how accurate they are whenever they drive a cue ball to a rail. It's this skill that allows them to control angles as they move the cue ball around the table. And as I travel around the country working with students for the 14 days experiment, this is one of the skills that we spend a lot of time on. Learning this skill is really going to improve your 8-ball and 9-ball game. I'm first going to go through several 8-ball and 9-ball scenarios to show you how powerful this shot is. Then we'll go through some drills to really help you get the hang of the shot. And once you get the shot down, I guarantee you're going to be using it over and over again because it really does help simplify many patterns. In this example, we're playing 8-ball and we have ball in hand on the 1-ball. The problem is that the 8-ball is surrounded by stripes, so I'm going to have to be pretty precise when playing position on it. Now many players would put the cue ball here and use low right to go one rail toward the side rail, or they would follow the cue ball off the end rail to this area here. While these shots will both work, they both require excellent cue ball control. Also, both shots are blind which means when we are shooting the one ball, we're not able to see the cue ball's destination for either shot. Now watch what happens when I put the cue ball here using high action. I can easily send the cue ball directly to the side rail for position on the eight ball. The benefit of shooting the shot this way is that I can see the cue ball's destination in my line of sight. So when I'm down on the shot, I can really line it up before I pull the trigger. And it's a shot that once you have down, you can repeat over and over again. Now I'm going to move the 8-ball farther up table, but it still doesn't matter. Once I line it up, it's a straight shot toward my target. If you want to reach a high level in pool, this is definitely one of the shots you'll need to add to your arsenal. In this game of 10-ball, my opponent scratched on the break, so we have ball in hand on the 1-ball. And many players would place the cue ball here and go one rail into this area for shape on the 2-ball. While this is definitely doable, there is a much better way to get down to the other end rail. I'm going to place the cue ball here and use high action to send the cue ball toward this diamond on the end rail. The advantage of shooting the shot this way is that you can see the cue ball's destination when you're lining up the shot. So you can really lock in on the correct path for the cue ball. It's important that whenever you send the cue ball to a rail like this, that you pick out a specific target on the rail to send the cue ball toward. In this situation, we're playing 8-ball and we have ball in hand on the 1-ball. And it looks like we'll have to play the 8-ball in the top left corner pocket. Now most players will put the cue ball here and try to roll into this area. This type of shot requires superb cue ball control. Whenever you're rolling the cue ball into a position area without using a rail, your speed control has to be very precise. And the farther the cue ball has to travel, the more likely it is that you're not going to end up where you think you're going to end up. It won't take much to end up a little short or a little long of your ideal position. A better way to play the shot is to send the cue ball off the side rail toward the 8 ball. We would simply select our target on the side rail and just pretend the stripe ball isn't even there. When I showed this type of shot to many of my students, they let me know that it's a shot that they would never attempt, simply because they would be too afraid of hitting the striped ball. But what they don't realize is that they are usually opting for a shot that is actually harder to execute than this shot. In this game of 8-ball, the player has two solids left. Now some players would choose to pocket the one first, then play the 5-ball in the side pocket. The danger is ending up a bit short, making it tough to get on the 8-ball. This type of position requires excellent cue ball control. Instead, we'll put the cue ball here and drive the cue ball to a target on the side rail, giving us an easy shot on the 1-ball. The advantage of driving the cue ball off a target on the side rail is that your speed control doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you hit your target on the side rail, you can under hit or over hit the shot and you should still have an angle on the next ball that you can work with. 
In this example, we have two solids left. In this situation, many players would pocket the one ball in the corner pocket or the side pocket and roll down the table for shape on the five ball. For instance, our ideal angle in the five ball is right here. So if we try to roll into this position area without using a rail, our speed control would have to be almost perfect. If we end up going a quarter inch too far, we're going to be left in a tough situation. Instead of rolling the cue ball into this position area, I'm going to send the cue ball off the rail toward the five ball. And since I need to cross the five ball pocket line, I'm going to use a touch of right spin. So instead of coming off the rail at this angle, the right spin will slightly widen the angle, leaving me on the correct side of the five ball pocket line. And the great thing about playing position this way is we don't need perfect speed control. And we'll be traveling toward the five ball at the correct angle. In this 8-ball layout, we're going to be playing the 8-ball in the left side pocket. And many players would put the cue ball here and go one rail into our position area. This is a very risky shot which takes excellent cue ball control, and it's also a blind shot. A better option is to put the cue ball here and just pick a target on the side rail. Anywhere in this area should be fine to pocket the 8-ball in the side pocket. The beauty of this shot is that you can see the target on the side rail in your line of sight. So it makes it easier to find the correct path for the cue ball when you're lining up the shot. Here's another example of players choosing the hard way to play position. In this layout, we need to pocket the two ball and play position for the eight ball in the bottom left corner pocket. Now many players have put the cue ball here and try to hit the rail between the side pocket and the stripe ball. Since it's a blind shot, it's much more difficult to hit the target on the side rail as opposed to putting the cue ball here and just going straight toward the target. And once you have this shot down, you can do this shot all day long. It really is that simple. In this last example, we're playing 10 ball and we have ball in hand on the 4 ball. The issue is that we need to get from the 5 ball to the 6 ball. If we can end up on this side of the 5 ball pocket line, it won't take much effort to pocket the 5 ball and go 2 rails for the 6. And many players would try to pocket the 4 ball and just roll into this position area. As we mentioned earlier, whenever you try to roll the cue ball into your position area without using a rail, the farther you have to travel, the more likely it is you're not going to end up where you think. For instance here, I've ended up a few inches short, so now I'm going to have to perform a much tougher shot to get on the 6 ball. Coming off a rail doesn't require perfect speed control. Even if you overhit the shot, since the cue ball is traveling toward the 5 ball at the correct angle, you should still be fine. Now let's go through some drills that are really going to help you learn the shot. I'm going to place an object ball here on a sticker. The goal on this shot is to pocket the object ball and send the cue ball toward the second diamond. And when shooting the shot, we're going to be using maximum high. Anything less than maximum high just won't work. Now when many players first try this shot, their cue ball goes long. And this is usually because they're not striking the cue ball high enough. For instance, watch the difference when I strike the cue ball with maximum high as opposed to just center high. You can see that maximum high has more rotations which help drive the cue ball toward the rail. When you shoot this shot, keep track of where the cue ball is striking the rail. If the cue ball is striking below the second diamond, then you need a hair more angle on the object ball. If the cue ball is striking above the second diamond, that means you're giving yourself too much angle. And if it strikes way above the second diamond, then you may not be striking high enough on the cue ball. And one mistake many players make is that when they place the cue ball on the table, they don't make any further adjustments. They just accept the angle and try to make it work. Well, that wasn't a wise choice. <laughs> okay, so uh, a good rule of thumb is whenever you're driving the cue ball toward a rail, toward a number, it's always high action. Always high, which means you're max high. Grab my cue. Um, and these shots right here are real angle sensitive. I mean, if you shoot these too quickly, you'll miss your target. Uh, see. So you can see how high I hit the cue ball. I'm going to try and keep my speed down, or I'm going to try and use that high action. 
you got to really take your time. You got to really put that cue ball exactly where you want. You don't want it to be hit here. You want it hit right about there. Once you're down on the shot, you want to use the shaft of your pull cue to help refine the angle. When you first practice these shots, it may be a bit of a guessing game as to what angle you'll need to send the cue ball toward your target. But after you practice this shot for a while, you start to instinctively know when you have the proper angle. And once you develop a feel for this shot, it won't take much effort to send the cue ball toward your target on the rail. Keep practicing this shot until you can perform it successfully a few times in a row. Next, we're going to send the cue ball toward this point here. This shot requires just a hair less angle. And once again, keep practicing this shot until you can consistently send the cue ball toward this target. It's important that you keep practicing these types of shots until you can develop a feel for what angle you'll need for each target. Next, select different targets along the side rail and see how well you can strike each one. Here's another drill for this shot. We'll be placing the object ball in the middle of the table and sending the cue ball to different targets along the side rail. See if you can strike each target five times in a row. And when working with my 14 days participants, we use a numbering system which starts at zero for the corner pocket and goes to 40, which is the side pocket. So my first target was 30 and now my target is 25. And when shooting these shots, place the cue ball as close as possible to the correct angle on the object ball while standing up. Now, when you're down on the table, you can start fine-tuning the angle slightly. And it may take a few seconds until you have it just right, but with enough practice, you can really become accurate at these types of shots. Keep working your way down the table until you get to 10. Now, the next time you're in a situation like this, you can simply pick a number on the side rail to send your cue ball toward for shape on the next ball. Another drill you can try is to send the cue ball around obstacle balls that are near the side rail. Keep moving the obstacle ball around and keep challenging yourself to try and get around the ball. Pick a number on the side rail and pretend that the obstacle ball isn't even there. Really fine tune the angle in the object ball before shooting. Eventually, you'll be able to send the cue ball around obstacle balls that are on the other side of the table. These shots require a bit more time in selecting just the right angle to send the cue ball toward your target. But once you have this shot down, it really will transform your game. Okay, you got a problem here with the two and the nine, and also the four ball doesn't have a pocket. You can't go past the eight. So this is a tricky little run out. I don't know about this. I wouldn't start here. I wouldn't either. I don't think this is a run out. I think you play on play for a safety off the two ball. I'm a little surprised he's trying to shoot this shot. Yeah, this is weird. He's doing that to break these balls up. Well, he did it. And one rule of thumb to remember is that whenever you are sending the cue ball to a rail, don't just blindly send it to the rail. Be very specific about what part of the rail you need to strike. It doesn't matter if you're rolling the ball, using a stun shot, a draw shot, or driving the cue ball to the rail, pick a number on the rail that you need to hit. Being able to hit specific numbers on a rail is one of the many skills that separate strong players from amateurs.